Hello again, my name is Daniel Gregg, and we will be continuing our series on the scroll of biblical chronology and prophecy. Last time we left off with the Babylonian exile, and we're now going to move forward to the reign of Xerxes and Darius and the other Persian kings that come afterward. Okay. Get a little continuity here. The Babylonian exile ended in 528 BC in the 70th year and the Cyrus known as Cambyses was the one who issued the decree to rebuild the temple. Of course we discussed that Cyrus was a throne name and applies to all of the Persian kings even though sec secular historians might have a different name for it. Okay. Now I want to discuss this, these columns over here a little bit, since I haven't done this yet. This first column here is B.C. years, 533 B.C., 532 B.C., 531 B.C., and so on. And they count down to A.D., which we will get to in a later lesson. The second column here, the green one, this is the year of the world. Okay, it counts starting with one from creation. And we see that the Babylonian exile ended, the 70th year ended in 3613 of the year of the world. The third column here is the sabbatic periods. You come up here, it counts off six regular years. The sowing and planting are allowed. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then the seventh year is what's called the Shemitah year. And this is the year in which the Torah is read in the Feast of Tabernacles, and also the year in which there is a debt release and the land is let fallow, which means that farmers aren't to sow their crops or reap them in the seventh year. And also the poor of the land are allowed to glean the aftergrowth and along with the people too. The poor would actually be allowed to glean in any of the other years too. Um, okay, the fourth column here is this little skinny column here and this marks the seasons of the year. So if we focus on, let's say, this one, the fifth year of the sabbatical period, okay, and the sabbatical period is calculated from a fall to a fall so this orange here, this orange quarter of the year stands for the fall season of the year. And then this blue quarter here stands for the winter season of the year. And then the green quarter here stands for the spring season of the year. And yellow, of course, is for the summer. Okay, in the next column over, we have the Jubilee period. And it counts from 1 to 50, and so we see here in the year that the Babylonian exile ended that it was a sabbatical year, and that it was the 35th year of the Jubilee period. And then it's 36 it goes to, and 37, and so on. And I'll scroll it up to show you what happens when we get to the 50th year. We go 48, 49, 50. Okay, 49, 50. Okay, and 50th year is also the first year in the next cycle, so it starts over again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. In the Jubilee year, the land was returned to its original owners. If they had rented it out, then on the Day of Atonement, the great trumpet would be sounded, and each owner or each family would be restored to its inherited holdings. All right. Now, on each page of the scroll book, I'll take a chance to introduce that here. This is based on the scroll of biblical chronology and prophecy here, which is available online on the website. It has everything in the scroll and plus a lot more. Okay, the website here is worldwidewebtorahtimes.org. And if you need to write, you can write this address here to order the book.
or you can order it online using PayPal too. Alright, so on each page of the scroll book, there's a legend, okay, which I call the scroll legend. It tells you what each column signifies. Column A, B, C, years. Column B, year of the world. Column C, sabbatic periods. Columns, a subdivision of column C, the Sabbath year. And then column D would be seasons. And column E would be the Jubilee period. And so on. Okay, now what is not shown in this scroll here is that at the top of each page in the scroll book, in the charts, the focus here is column headers reprinted at the top of each page. Okay, and if you look at the scroll legend here, these correspondings tell what each column does, what each reference biblical or scriptural error refers to. All right, so now we were, we ended up the Babylonian exile with Cambyses, and we showed that the exile was computed from the middle deportation, and that to have a full 70 years, it has to be this way. Okay, now we're going to go forward to the reign of Xerxes. Okay, the scripture gives dates in the terms of, the, um, of Xerxes, who's called in the scriptures, Ahasuerus. Okay? And for instance, in Esther 2.16, so Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month of Tevet, in the seventh year of his reign. Okay? And we can actually work this out um, with astronomical calculations and knowing the year. This turns out to be Sunday, 1222-479 B.C., Julian period, to Monday, 1-1222. Um, the seventh year of his reign, okay. Um, the end of the seventh year would be Monday, 1-2478 B.C., okay. And if you look over here, the seventh year is circled, okay. And this middle column here is regular, the regular Persian or Babylonian method of calculating regnal years from Nisan 1 to the end of Adar in each year. This other column here is how the year would have been interpreted in, in Judea, okay, on a fall basis. And so we have a date here, okay, also in Esther 1.3, in the third year of his reign, he made a great feast unto all his princes. So here's the third year. Okay, and then the pur or the lot was cast in the twelfth year of his reign um, in the first month, and it came up to be in the twelfth month on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. So here's the twelfth year. Okay, the twelfth year began in 474 and ended in 473. Okay, the scripture uses... The scripture uses uh, the um, dates of these pagan kings, of these foreign kings, because it, and as we discussed in the past video, um, it, it started with the Babylonian period, the Neo-Babylonian Empire that did this. And the reason the scripture does this is because this is the first time in history that we can be certain of the dates of these kings from astronomy and archaeology, and there's a consensus among scholars about when these were. Okay, so the scripture does not use what I would call uncertain dates that couldn't be figured out. The Almighty knew that we could figure these out, that there would be a consensus, and the archaeology and the astronomy would show when these years are. So the scripture condescended to use the dates of Persian kings and Babylonian kings. All right, now I want to focus on the month of Adar this year, since we're talking about uh, Esther and Ahasuerus, okay? Uh, 
Right now we're in the 12th month, the month Adar, AD 2012. All right, and this top portion here, okay, this is um, the biblical calendar for, for the month of Adar this month. The new moon was seen here on the fourth day of the week, okay, and actually it was seen on the evening on the third day of the week here in the Gregorian sense, okay, and then the new moon day is the, is the next day, okay, and if you jump down here, the new moon day corresponds to January 25th of 2012, and the new moon would have been seen on the evening of January at sunset on January 24th. Okay, now, uh, the fast of Esther and Purim and Purim Shushan is not marked in the 12th month here. And there's a reason for this, because this year has a second Adar. And when there's a second Adar in a year, Purim is bumped to the last month in the year. So Purim will be in second Adar this year. So if we move down to second Adar, here's the month of second Adar, right here. 13th month, Adar to AD 2012, okay, and we see that the new moon for second Adar will be seen um, on Thursday evening, okay, A rating, so visibility will be certain, certain at that time, um, and that will be, if we come down here, uh, the new moon day is February 24th, so that would be February 23rd that the moon will be seen. And then the new moon day will be February 24th. And then we count from that time off 13 days to the fast of Esther. The 14th day of the month will be Purim. And the 15th day of the month will be Purim Shushan. Um, marking the deliverance of the Jews from, the, from Haman's evil machinations. Haman the Agagite, or actually... Um, an Amalekite, which was Israel's perpetual enemy, and Haman tried to have all the Jews in the Persian Empire destroyed, um, which included Judea, because Judea at the time of Esther was one of the 127 provinces of the Persian Empire. Okay, uh, before we continue here, a, a few comments about this calendar. Um, it's gone through several versions. I extensively rewrote this last fall in order to make it more accurate and bring it up to modern standards. First comes the Hebrew or the biblical month and then the corresponding Julian or Gregorian month. In this case Gregorian because we're after the period of 15, um, 1582 or 1582 I think. Okay, when the Gregorian calendar was introduced by the by the Pope. But since the modern world works in terms of this, we need to set this up in parallel to the biblical calendar um, so that people can understand where in the terms of the church's calendar that the scriptural calendar actually falls. Okay. Um, so Purim will be next month, okay, not this month, because this next month will be Adar Adar 2. And let's see, if you look here, this marks the Sabbath beginning at sunset on the sixth day of the week and then ending at sunset on the seventh day of the week. So the Sabbath is from sunset to sunset. Um, new moon marked up here, Adar, that's this month. And right now we are on, let's see, we're on Monday, no, this is Monday, right? January 30th. Okay, so that corresponds to the sixth day of Adar. So the day is, today is the sixth day of Adar. Alright, so let's go back down to our scroll here. We were just discussing Esther and, and Purim, and it says, And the lot fell on the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar. Okay, and so of course we have the fast of Esther on, on the thirteenth of Adar, and then Purim on the 14th and 15th, and um, they were delivered from their enemies on the 13th, 14th, they defeated them, and then there was an additional day of um, battle that was allowed 
on the 15th. And so in Karim Shushan means the Jews of Shushan or the Persian capital celebrated an extra day for Pyrrha. Alright, so that takes care of the reign of Xerxes. And the scripture, like I said, uses the dates because we can be certain of when these kings um, reigned. Now, we come to the next king after Xerxes, who was murdered, um, who is Artaxerxes, also known in Latin, Longimanus, or long hand, the king with the long hand. All right, and in the, and we will pick this up in the in the next segment and discuss it in more detail.